A question that a lot of people may have on their mind when trading stocks is, should I use margin or leverage my account with margin to try to get additional return? So this concept of leverage is basically we can borrow money from whatever financial institution that we have our brokerage in, and then we can use that money to buy more stock. So for example, let's say we had $100,000 cash in our account. With margin, we could potentially borrow an additional $100,000 and then take the $200,000 and uh, buy $200,000 worth of stock when we had only started out with $100,000 in the first place. So is it worth doing this? Well, that's the question that I'm going to try to help to answer in this video. And I have modeled out a whole simulation here. In this example, we're going to be assuming that, let's say we're thinking about buying an S&P 500 ETF, perhaps SPY. Well, what we can start off doing is come up with some sort of expected annual return for the whole year. Now, I put down 8% because the S&P 500 has typically returned 8% per year. We also need a standard deviation, which is a measure by which the returns uh, fluctuate. So I'm going to assume that it will stick around its historical average, which has been 15% annually. Now we can convert both of these into daily values because we're going to want to calculate how this portfolio's value changes every day. So we can use um, this formula here, where basically we're assuming 252 trading days in a year and daily compounding of interest to figure out that we expect every day to return about 0.03%. And then we can use this formula for calculating the daily standard deviation from the annual standard deviation. And now finally, we can write what we're going to start off with in cash. So this would be our real portfolio value, like the actual money that we have before we do anything with margin. Now in this example, I'm going to say that we're just going to have $100,000 um, in our portfolio, in our own money. That's our own equity. Now, we'll think about how much do we want to borrow on margin. So we need to get some sort of borrowing rate. And if you Google what is the best, uh, who has the best or lowest margin rates of any brokerage, you'll see pretty much all the results say interactive brokers. So I'm going to go and check out interactive brokers margin rates and you'll see that they have this uh, calculator here. Now I'll put the link to this calculator um, in the pinned comment and in the description of this video. So feel free to click on that to figure out what you might get for the margin rate. So these rates are always going to be changing and they'll fluctuate with market interest rates. So it might be different than what you see in this video if you're watching it anytime after I've made this. So let's say that we had an initial uh, 100,000 in cash, and we want to basically borrow an additional 100,000 to get a total of 200,000 we can invest. So the amount that we're gonna borrow is actually 100,000, so I'm gonna put that in there, and I'm gonna keep it on pro, because pro actually gets better margin rates than light. So I'll do uh, on pro. And so right now we see that all we're getting is this uh, margin rate of 5.83%. Now, I'll show you one other thing. So if we look down here, we can see that, at least with the USD, the uh, 100,000 is the highest rate you would get. Now, if we went above and borrowed more than 100,000, we could get a lower rate. And then if we went even, you know, more and more money, basically you get lower and lower rates. So let's stick with this example, 5.83% for now. And I can go and punch this in as the annual interest rate. So I'll hit that. Now, this leverage ratio is going to tell us uh, basically how much we're gonna leverage up our position. So we're basically doubling our position. So the leverage ratio is two, which means that we're going to have uh, an amount that we borrowed of $100,000. So. I should also point out that based on our annual borrowing rate, we did the same formula as we did over here to get to a daily borrowing rate. So now we know how much that's gonna cost us the interest every single day. So now we need to figure out 
how would our leverage portfolio grow or change over time versus a normal portfolio? And this is really a question more so of statistics. So what I did here is I mapped out a whole bunch of days. So this is the first day, second day, third day. We just wanna figure out how is our money changing every single day. So if I go all the way to the bottom, I've done 1,512 days. So why did I do that many? Well, if there's 252 trading days in a year, if you divide this number by, by 252, it ends up as five. So I did five years, a five-year simulation of how will the values change. So we need to come up with some way to calculate how these values might change. Well, in this video, I'm gonna assume a standard distribution of returns, like a standard normal bell curve. So I'm calculating random z-scores with this Excel function. So then once we have all the z-scores, we can then use a, this formula to basically say that for each day's return, it would be equal to the mean expectation for that day right there, plus the z-score for the day times the standard deviation. So this is just a way for us to randomize these returns with keeping in mind that we expect this to be our, uh, our true expected return each day. So if I do that, I'll show you one thing. How these returns are going to look each day is going to basically look like a bell curve. So let me go find actually a good chart to show this right here. So we can see right here that it basically just looks like a bell curve where everything's hovering around that mean expected return each day. The thing is, the one caveat is that equity returns oftentimes don't look like a bell curve. So if we think about this this return, if this is more normal, typically we would have more activity in the tail, so more extreme outcomes, um, so larger losses than this would expect and larger gains than this might expect, which could make this analysis not perfectly accurate because having more activity out in the tails might hurt a leverage portfolio. But anyways, let's move on. So we have all of our expected daily returns that are randomly um, generated. And then we can figure out how is our portfolio's value changing each day. So if we have a normal portfolio, these columns represent if we just took our $100,000 and we just invested it in this S&P 500 ETF and we didn't take any margin or any leverage at all. If we had this daily return, then we'd start off with our $100,000 and then we would get one plus that percentage and we would have this much. And then we can just do that the next day where we multiply it by uh, one plus that day's return, and then we multiply that by the portfolio value of the previous day. We just see this portfolio value is just gonna change and change over time. Now, one thing we can do is compare that to the leverage portfolio in these columns, whereas the leverage portfolio is going to have a slightly more convoluted way of calculating the interest. What you'll see here is basically you know, this is a complex formula. Don't get too confused about that. Just see that basically every day. This is the return without the leverage. And then this is the return with the leverage, which is slightly lower, right? You can see it's about 0.11% lower. If I look at the next date, that's also about, or I should say 0.011% lower. So every time the leveraged return is going to be a little bit lower than the original one because of this borrowing amount. And then, so we are going to basically have a portfolio value that instead of starting at 100,000, is actually going to start at 200,000 because we borrowed not only, or we didn't just start with the 100,000, we actually leveraged it, multiplied it by two. So now we start with 200,000 and then we get this return for the day. And now we're at this value. So then we'll see how does this portfolio's value grow over time and we'll keep growing it and growing it. And now we can see in just one single example that basically our leverage portfolio started off with 200,000. Our, our current portfolio without leverage started off at 100,000. You can see how they change over time. But in this one example, you can see that they kind of converge on each other. So actually this portfolio is doing better in this example because we're gonna have to pay back that 100,000 at the end and that's gonna drop the value. So once we pay back the 100,000, so you see this guy here, he ended at about 252,000. And we could see that if I went all the way to the bottom, 252,000. 
but we have to take out or subtract the original amount that we borrowed here of 100,000 to figure out how much would we really have ended up with. So in this one specific example, not leveraging actually ended up being better. But that's only one example. What would happen if we did 50,000 simulations of this based on these numbers over and over and over and over and over? Which one would end up being better more often? Well, the cool thing is that we actually can do that. So I'm going to highlight all these values, or I'll set this one equal to this first, and set this one equal to this one here, and then I'm going to grab this whole area like this. I'll go to data, what if analysis data table. I'm gonna select this column input cell, grab an empty cell, and hit OK. So now, we're going to run a simulation with 50,000, or I should say 5,000 iterations of this entire simulation, and then we're gonna see how do the outputs compare. So great, we just did it. Now we can see that our mean annual return, so I should clarify, mean annual return is going to be equal to 9.62% for the normal portfolio, but only 4.69% for this leverage portfolio. So that would indicate that in this specific example, the normal portfolio seemed to outperform the leverage portfolio. And if we look at the median return as well, we'll see that the median uh, performance for the normal portfolio, which should be roughly about 8%, right, did outperform that leverage portfolio as well. And then we can see based on this formula that almost 90% of the time, this normal portfolio outperformed the leverage portfolio. So would we say that, oh, based on this, you should never use any leverage, it wouldn't make sense. I'm not gonna get, go there quite yet because basically whether the leverage portfolio looks more favorable than the normal portfolio in a lot of ways will come down to the rate that you can borrow at with the uh, margin rates. So let's do a different example where we go back to this page here and we use a different amount. So remember that we're getting the worst interest rate up to 100,000. So let's say that instead of leveraging only one times, so we could leverage, maybe we'll uh, go to a leverage ratio of four. So that would mean we'd have to borrow 300,000 to make our initial investment of 100,000 plus a 300,000, 400,000. So are we allowed to do that? Well, over here we can see that for a long position when we're buying, uh, basically our initial margin, we can do a certain amount as long as we have 25% of our own value of the stock. So if we buy 400,000 worth of stock and we put in 100,000, we've got 25% of our own. So we're satisfying that. So let's now try this. So let's go and change this to 300,000. And that's the amount we're gonna borrow now. And then see our blended rate actually decreased to 5.497%. So I'm gonna copy that. And now we're gonna bring it over here. So we're lowering the rate we're borrowing at. And now we're going to increase our leverage ratio up to uh, four. So now you'll see that this is going to update here to say that we're actually borrowing $300,000. And now I'm going to delete everything right here and let's rerun this entire simulation and see what results we get and if they are at all different. So let's do data table column input cell, I'm gonna hit a blank cell, and then I'm gonna hit OK. So now we're rerunning our simulation. My intuition tells me that I think that we're actually going to perform better on the leverage portfolio now. Okay, so we lowered our borrowing rate, and now we can see that the actual mean annual return of this leverage portfolio is actually just ahead of the mean uh, annual return of our unleveraged or normal portfolio, but they're pretty close. However, the normal portfolio is still beating the leveraged portfolio by quite a bit with the median performance. And so one thing I'll talk about is why is, um, why are they, you know, why is one worse for the median uh, than the mean? So when you see something like this, 
basically that means that typically there's going to be outliers in the higher direction that are really skewing skewing the results. So most of the time, the normal portfolio, or more often than not, about 57% of the time, the normal portfolio is going to beat the leverage portfolio. But on the times where the leverage portfolio beats the normal portfolio, it might really beat it by a lot. Like here's an example where it beats it by about 66,000. This time it beats it by over 100,000, right? But another risk of taking the, these uh, margins out to borrow is that you can end up where basically now if it didn't perform well, uh, let's say in this scenario was a time where if you had invested 100,000, at the end of year five, you'd only have 73,000, which would stink. You'd be down about $27,000 but at least you're not negative 87,000 where now you owe money to the brokerage firm that gave you the margin. So the thing about it is it could be more optimal to invest on margin, but it can also be very risky if the thing that you don't want to have happen actually ends up happening. So I'm going to make this file uh, available for free download, so feel free to head over to my website. You can see a link in the description or the pinned comment to download this file for free. You can play with it, and please uh, support the channel by hitting any of the interactive brokerage links that you see, because I'm now partnered with them, and that helps me out. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and please subscribe for more videos just like this one.